Welcome back to the shop guys. Today I have a 2015 YZ250F. Uh, the owner says it's been hard to start lately. It's been popping and bogging and stuff and he asked me if I could adjust the valves. Now here's the thing. I hear this a lot. People say it's popping so it needs the valves adjusted. I, I don't know. In my experience I've never seen a bike that needed a valve adjustment that was popping. I just haven't seen it. Not on these one cylinder bikes. That might be the case with multiple cylinders. Bikes have multiple cylinders or cars, you know, where you adjust the valves. Maybe that can cause them to pop. I've just never seen it on a uh, four-stroke single-cylinder dirt bike. Just when the valves need adjustment, usually they're really hard to start when they're cold. It's usually intake valves that end up too tight because sand and dirt has gotten in there and eroded the seat to the valve, and uh, and. It just becomes really hard to start when it's cold. Once you get it warmed up, they'll usually start up easier, at least initially, until they get really, really warm, uh, worn out. But at first, they just start becoming hard to start cold. They take multiple kicks, and then they fire up. And once you get them warmed up and they have some heat in the cylinder, everything kind of expands, and, and they'll fire up again when they're warm. So I've never seen a bike pop because it needed a valve adjustment. Just I've never seen it. But what I have seen is when they're running lean, they pop. Either carburetors lean, fuel injections lean, or you have a fuel pump going out. This is a, a fuel injecting bike. It doesn't have a battery. It's not an electric start bike like they started in, I believe it was 20, uh, what year was it, 2018 or 2017. Um, this this doesn't have a battery. It's just a, uh, but it is fuel injection and it does have a fuel pump. So what I did before I ordered the parts that I ordered for this bike was I pulled the seat and the tank off, pulled the spark plug out, I took this doohickey right there and I filled it up with about that much gas in here. I don't know how many cc's that is, but you get the idea. It takes a, a significant amount of gas. You don't have to go too crazy with it, but a drop is not enough. You got to do a little more than drop. So I would say definitely look at the syringe here so you get the idea. Anyway, I poured, um, I, I put that gas right into the spark plug hole, put the spark plug back in, and within three kicks she fired right up. <clears throat> now before that, I kicked her about 20 or 30 times and nothing. But as soon as I added that fuel, within three kicks, she went doom, and then she died. But she ran. She barked off. She ran for a couple seconds. Told me it's a fuel problem. It's not a, a valve adjustment problem. It's a fuel problem. I'm not even worried about checking the valves at this point. I'm digging in right into the fuel pump. So let's go ahead and full, pull this fuel pump off and test it. All right, the fuel tank's off. If you never had one of these off before, um, these things could be a little bit tricky, the fuel line to get it off. You can do it by hand, or you can buy the little special tool to help. But you can get them by hand if you don't have this tool. This just makes it easier. But anyway, um, if this if this was one of the newer ones that is electric start, it would have a battery, and all I would have had to do is just disconnect the fuel line from the fuel pump, put a, the fuel pressure gauge on it like this, and uh, and hit the start button and and check the fuel pressure. But because this is a kickstart bike, it does not have a battery. I actually have to run 12 volts to it. That's why I just completely removed it from the bike. But it does help know which one of these two is the positive and which one's the negative. If you don't know, what you can do is take a voltmeter, ohm meter, or whatever, and uh, connect it, connect it to the line that goes to the fuel pump. Just connect, you know, uh, tap into them right there and kick the bike and figure out which one's the positive and negative, and reference that to the fuel pump here so that you can connect the battery up to it. We're about to connect it the correct way. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do all that today because I actually have a YZ uh, fuel pump right here. Now this fuel pump is not good, it's bad, but I can at least see which one's the positive wire. Uh, on the motor up here there's a negative right there and up underneath here it's hard to see but there's a little positive sign underneath there. So we know the blue wire is the positive, the blue wire goes right here and so it's the one on the edge. The blue wire the one on the edge is the positive. So let me go ahead and get the battery set up. We're going to run some voltage to it and see what she's got. What I'm going to do is just use these little clips right here. And since I don't actually have one, uh, I don't actually have one of these little terminals spare that I can use it for a testing device. But I do have these. So I'm going to plug this in. Okay, so the one closest to the edge is the positive. The reason I mentioned about the uh, kickstart and, bat and battery power electric start is in case you have an electric start bike, these fuel pumps are, are the same between the two. The only difference is one already has a battery on the bike, the other one doesn't. Okay, we got that connected. Alright, I have a motorcycle battery here. I um, have the fuel pressure gauge hooked up. I have this rigged up right here, making sure these wires don't touch each other because I don't have them insulated. 
and uh, the red wire let's see the red wire here which is a positive has the white stripe on it so that's gonna be our positive right here okay I'm gonna connect it up now you gotta be real careful when you do this because you you know when you connect the battery up you might have a spark or whatever so make sure the area is all dry of gasoline make sure the only gas you have is in the tank and make sure the tank is upright to so the, the fuel level is up at the bottom of the pump here where it needs to be so it can pick it up so let's see what she has we're looking at 30 psi and she's yeah 30 psi she's only kicking 30 psi and she drops quick when I disconnect the battery that's not good not not for a kickstart bike for when they drop quick like that um, it should hang and maybe just slowly drop shouldn't drop like that almost instantly because what happens is with the kickstart bike when you kick it it creates the stator creates some voltage and that voltage um, lights up the fuel pump and the computer and everything like that but it, it's only for one kick and the voltage is pretty much gone I mean it does store some power and the condenser on the bike but that's not enough power to really run the, the fuel pump it just kind of smoothens out the power as you're kicking if this was an electric start bike, obviously you can just hold the button dun, 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 and the fuel pump gets the whole pressure the whole time. So if, even if it drains back down quick, it might not affect it as long as it has proper fuel pressure. But when it's a kickstart bike, it's very important that they hold pressure. So let's try it again to show you guys one more time to see what I'm talking about. 30 PSI, it drops quick. Now, this bike is supposed to be at around 50 PSI. All these bikes are. Most, most street bikes, dirt bikes fuel injection bikes are around 50 psi as long as you're getting somewhere between 45 to 55 that's usually okay and the reason I say that is first off they're not they're usually the fuel pressure regulators in these are usually not dead accurate sometimes they can be around 51 or 49 also these gauges are always not always accurate either so don't you know if you read 55 uh, 45 but your bikes running fine I wouldn't just rush out and replace the fuel pump unless you unless you, you know if your bikes running fine I wouldn't worry about it because it's probably okay or if it's reading 52 or 54 but it's running fine it's probably okay could be the gauge I mean you can you know if you really really want everything perfect you can go start chasing it down but yeah it anywhere between 45 to 55 is typically what I see on a good running bike um, let's put go ahead and let me disconnect these things we got that done also when you do that when you play with gas and power like this make sure you have a fire extinguisher ready and available and I also like to keep a water hose ready to go because the fire extinguisher sometimes only does so much so at 30 psi and it dropping quick when I disconnect the power we can it's safe to assume this fuel pump is not working properly we have two options we can go with one of these kits like this quantum kit right here that comes with a I mean, we can go OEM go away kit the OEM ones come complete all you got to do is just bolt them in they come with a new fuel pressure regulator right here the new motor and a, a, and a brand new filter the filter I believe is in there but these aftermarket kits they don't come with all that they, you have you have to actually disassemble the body you have to disassemble this plastic body and put the new in, the new parts in so what these do come with is a new seal the filters now it's assortment pack because it's meant to fit m multiple different bikes comes with a brand new motor and a fuel pressure regulator I chose some of the cheaper kits I have not had good luck with them $30 $40 kits you see on eBay um, sometimes the motors don't even produce enough power uh, enough uh, pressure I stay away from them I have I am familiar with the quantum kits this is the kit that we're gonna be using this bike today I'm familiar with these um, they, they I always seem to get have good luck with them when I do use them um, the motors seem to be really good quality I also have had good luck with the all balls kit but the reason I chose to go with the quantum kit for this one is because the alls ball did not come with a fuel pressure regulator included in the kit and this one does and uh, the reason I chose to get one with the fuel pressure regulator is because the last one I went to do I put a new pump in it and it was still low on pressure and it actually did end up being just a bad fuel pressure regulator I thought it was a pump but so I, I to, to go ahead and make sure I cover all bases I got a kit that has a regulator and the pump I don't want to drain the fuel out of the tank for this job so what I did is I put a nipple on the top right here to block the fuel from coming out of the lid so I can flip the tank over and work on it from the bottom side so as long as uh yeah that should be okay I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off I know I seem to do a lot of Yamahas lately 
I make videos on a lot of Yamahas. I need to start getting some other brands in the mix here. Um, yesterday I did a big bore kit right over here on a uh, 2021 CRF CRF 250. I should have put a video together on that, but the guy needed it back quick. They're, they're training for the mini O's and pretty much I had one day to get the job done and I needed to do it quick and uh, so I didn't film for that one but I definitely oh look forgot that one. I definitely need to get some more bikes of different, different brands in seems I've been only doing Yamaha videos lately I mean there's a lot of Yamahas here in Florida that I will say look at that the fuel, the fuel was just at the right height it's just right there any any more fuel in there and it would have been dropping fuel everywhere so we got that out let me go ahead and move this out of the way for now leave that set there okay there's a, we can see that there's a little tab there that locates the direction this thing goes so I don't have to worry about that too much we have the seal there, but these are reusable seals, so as long as this one's in good shape, I'm going to reuse it instead of uh, instead of attempting to use the one that came in the kit. As long as it's in good shape, because the OEM stuff, a lot of times, is good, and usually sometimes better, a lot of times. All right, where, where should I start on this one? These are difficult to pop open, I'll tell you right now. So let me get a flathead and I'm going to start working at it. You almost feel like you're going to break them as you're trying to prop it, pop it open. Let me get another flathead. Like I said, these are really difficult. Hmm. Uh, oh, they got another one back there. All right. You know what? Hold on. Let's start up top here. Tell you what, I'm actually going to get this out of the way first. Get the fuel pressure regulator out of there. Look in here, see, yep, they got another seal up in there. Let me grab that just to be safe. Another o ring. Go. Okay, I got everything out of there. All right, we're gonna try this again. They got a lot of tabs, and you have to have every one of these up. Got one hidden behind here. Oh, that one just fell out. Oh, but she's staying out, so that's good. I think we just got one more here to pop. Oh, boy. One just went back in. Dang it. I'm just going to leave that one right there. Let me look at this a little more. Oh, there it went. Yeah, I just kept what I was doing right here and it just popped up. So, okay. Let me go ahead and disconnect these wires. Get them out of our way. We got this hose here.
something's attached over here. There we go. Okay, we have this fuel line here. Let's see if it came with another fuel line. Usually they do. This one doesn't appear that it did. It came with this, but this is this is too long. Let me see what I got. It did come with cl clamps. Usually they come with a rubber hose this size, but it seems to not be in this kit. I wonder if they uh, f failed to put it in there, but I think I have one because I believe we're going to have to cut this to get that off. So let me see if I got one. Okay, I found a fuel line, fuel line just like the fuel line that they usually include in the kit. They usually have a rubber hose just like this, the perfect length. I don't know why it's not in this kit. Unless I'm missing something here, I'm not finding it. But no worries, we have one. It did at least come with two uh, hose clamps. So we got everything we need. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get a razor. On some bikes, I've been able to just bend it but not this one some of the different models there we go all right she's splitting open set that over here get these out of my way close this razor for safety All right, we have this motor. It has this little clip right here that holds it in place. I'm um, holds the filter on. So that's all it's holding the filter on right now. Besides, uh, yeah, that's all. So let me pop that off. Let me get some glasses. I'm getting older. All right, I can see what I'm doing now. Cut that off. Somehow I have to get this off. It looks like it's latched up over here. Let me see. There we go. That's all I had to do. Alright, looking here. There's no O-rings or anything, but there is one right here. So there's the motor. The filter's still in there. Let's pop the motor off there. Off the filter. Okay, we got that off the filter. There's the old motor. Okay, we got to get the filter out of here. Okay, that just clips out. There we go. There's the old filter right here. Now these filters, you, you can't really tell when they're clean or dirty because they have multiple layers and the first layers, uh, it's pretty free flowing so a lot of the dirt goes up in there and gets caught up in the finer layers that are deeper up in there. find the filter in this kit that best matches this one we got that one we know that one don't fit well, what I'm looking at is the entrance here the connection this one nope this one yeah it's a little bit of a bigger filter but it but it's got the same connection so that's oh wait hold on 
No, this one ain't it. Yeah, this is it. A little bit of a bigger, bigger filter, but it, it'll fit in there. And it has that little clip thing that we had to pry off just a minute ago. Yeah, she fits. Look at that. There we go. All right. Set that aside. Brand new motor. Pull off these little protective caps here. Pair back to the stock one here. Yeah, this kit must be missing something. That's that's pretty unfortunate. <clears throat> I, I'm not gonna blame it on Quantum. I bought this kit off eBay, so who knows? Someone else might. It doesn't have the pack that has like the new washers and stuff someone might have bought this and returned it and didn't have all the parts in so I'm gonna reuse this this uh, o-ring right here it's still in good shape usually the kit does come with that stuff all right got that popped in there or should I do it down there first yeah I think I'm gonna do it down here first pretty much have these these are a, a interference fit right here so you pretty much have to tap them down so I'm gonna do that right here real quick on the bench I'll just rest this gently right there you don't want to tap too hard and crack the other side of it just some love taps will do now you can see she's on there so we're good there the o-ring in place try to remember which way this went on and went on this way there we go Oh, you know what? Hold on. Put a little WD-40 on here. Help that thing slide in there easier. There we go. And now I got to hook that back over the top. See, all I'm doing is taking this piece right there, a hook. And there we go. Then we pop this new piece on. These things are not easy to get on. Well, I'll be back. What I'm doing here is I use a very small socket, just small enough to fit over that little round nub. I set that, the new little locking washer thing, these little, where is it, these little doohickeys right here, I set it on there, and you just press it on. There it is, she's on there. All right. Yeah, it's a shame it didn't come with the hose and it didn't come with the little rubber o-ring for the pump that must have been in a whole separate bag 
you know, like they have everything in their own little individual bag in the kit, and the bag, that bag must be missing from this kit for whatever reason. Again, I did buy this one on eBay. Now, I'm not dogging eBay. I get a lot of good stuff on eBay. Yeah, you know how it is. I mean, I've even bought stuff from Rocky Mountain before and, and opened up, and, like, I bought pistons before, and the circlips are completely missing. Or the piston rings are not even for that piston. So I guess it doesn't really matter where you buy it from. This can happen sometimes. But I'm going to keep moving forward because the stuff that I needed is not stuff that's going to keep us from getting this job completed. Because I already had a hose, you know, fuel line. And that O-ring, them things, you can reuse them things a million times. So it's not a big deal. What we do need to do is cut this down to the right size. So let me go cut that. Let me make sure it's clean on the inside. Wet it and blow it out real quick. Just because this hose has been sitting on the shelf for a little bit. There we go. I just don't need it sending any trash into the fuel injector. Oh, you know what? Get off there. Let me spray her down here with some WD-40. That won't hurt a fuel injector. That does help it slide over easier. Because I have to slide this piece on. Alright, I'm going to give it one more quick inspection. Make sure we got everything. Um, okay. They usually just... Wait, come on, let me look, make sure we're not missing anything. Nope. They can usually be tough to get back together, just like they're tough to get them apart. There it is. All right. Oh, I forgot to put the hose clamps on. I can I can still get them on though. Not a big deal. And I'll tell you what, you definitely want to use these hose clamps. Had a bike come, one, come to me one time, and uh, it was acting like the fuel, like like a fuel pump was going out or whatever. Pulled it apart and found everything good. It just didn't have the hose clamps, and so the fuel pressure would slip right out of the hose. You know what? Hold on, hold on. I want to position these like this, actually. That way I can have it more inward right there. All right, got that one on. Let me get the other one on now. Like I said, I should have put these on first, but it's okay. Now obviously the advantage of doing this is this kit is only $80, $89, um, where if you bought a whole OEM Yamaha field pump, you're looking at like, I think last time I priced them, if I remember correctly, like $379 or something like that. So you're saving about $300 going this route.
Now I will say, me myself, I ride on the track mainly. Um, you know, lots of big jumps and everything like that. And, and and I would rather use just buy replace it with a whole OEM pump instead of disassembling it like this. Um, on my personal bike, on my own bike, or a bike that someone is taking very serious racing and they're doing a lot of big jumps and they really got to, they're really dependent on that motor, you know, um, not shutting down on the track, you know, being reliable. But this is this bike right here is just used at FTR races. You know, it's mainly just woods. You know, you can see he's got the, the pink backgrounds of the X, that's Sportsman 2 class for FTR. And uh, so that's not so important. And I'm not saying that this is less reliable. I haven't seen this to be any less reliable than a stock pump is. You know, when you do these kits like this, I, I find it to be about the same. But I just, I personally have more peace of mind if, if I just pull it out of a box and just pay the 300 something dollars and pop it in. Saw how I did that. It came with all the O-rings on it and everything like that. We're going to test it anyway before we put it on the bike. We're going to test it again and make sure it's good. But that's the new fuel pressure regulator. Came with all new O-rings. See, that came with all new O-rings, but they didn't give me the O-ring for the freaking pump or the hose. I, I swear something was missing in this kit, but it is what it is. All right, getting high on gasoline in here. Well, let me see something real quick. Let me see if you can put this fuel pump in any old direction. Nope, it looks like they, they lock you into a certain pattern here. Let's see what pattern. That's it right there. Let me see. Let me try one more. Yep, that don't work. That, basically, they make it work. <coughs> All the holes will not align unless it's in the unless it's rotated into the right position, and that is the correct position. So I'm gonna try to remember that with that tab right there. So when I go to drop that pump in, there we go. Put a little bit of Loctite on these. I'm gonna use the blue stuff for this. It's not a engine part or anything. Blue will be fine. cinch them down by hand to make sure they all came out nice and tight. We're going to check the fuel pressure again. Pop that on there. Alright, remember the positive was the one on the edge. Grab the battery. Okay, I have her all set up. Let's see what she kicks now. Remember I said anywhere from 45 to 55 is good. 54, right on. Disconnect the power. Now you see how the needle is dropping slowly. It's not just falling like it did earlier. That's what I was saying. They should hold pressure for quite a while and just drop slowly that way in between kicks it still has pressure at the injector so the next kick when it gets power again it's ready to go otherwise it makes them hard to start let's try again there it is 54 and she drops slow so she's good let's go ahead and bolt her on and start the bike up
Okay, I got her back on the bike and plugged in. I don't have the seat on yet. I just want to do a test fire. I don't expect her to fire in one or two kicks because we did disconnect the fuel line. So there's air in the fuel line. And as you know, the fuel pump only gets pressure, only gets power when you're, while you're kicking. So we have to kick it enough to get enough power to push fuel down into the fuel lines. Let's do it. That's about right. It takes quite a few kicks when you first put them on, but watch, now it should start in one to two kicks now that we have it primed up. Yep, one kick. So let me go ahead and put the seat and tank back on. I mean, the seat back on and the, the bolts back in there, and we'll give her one more kick, see how she does. Okay, I got her back together. Let's give her another test fire. I'll let her warm up just a little bit here and I'll get in the throttle a few times. Okay, she's nice and warm now. I'm gonna flip the throttle a few times. She's up and running good, guys. Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, the Quantum kit got the job done. As you see, I had to improvise a few things that was missing from the kit. One rubber hose and, um, and a little rubber O-ring, but it got the job done for, what, $89? Um, the OEM pumps are like $379 or something like that last time I uh, priced it. Now, like I said, <clears throat> if, if, if you got the money, and you're racing the bike hardcore I would just replace the whole pump personally but if you're on a budget or if you're okay with it and you want to save a little bit of money or you're riding the bike mainly just play riding flat ground in the woods and it's just a play bike or whatever then it's not a bad deal to go with one of these kits quantum makes a good one so does all balls um, typically that kit does have everything in it it could have just been you know a return or something who knows but usually has everything but yeah i appreciate you guys watching this if you like this kind of stuff please click like and subscribe i'm gonna try to get some other brands up in here instead of i'm always working on these yamahas you know uh, i get a lot of these things lately uh i'm gonna try to get some other brands up in here up on the healing bench and stuff and we can rip in them and see what's going on with them so catch you guys later